unification and spread of Soviet folklore and folkloristics in different parts of the USSR was dissimilar because Soviet Republic were integrated into the socialist space in various ways. Uh, there were super regional and regional features that brought together the various republics of the Eastern Bloc and the Soviet Union itself. This applied to the Western territories of the USSR in general uh, and Western Ukraine as a region special in historical and ethnographical terms in particular. In Western Ukraine, lands, especially Galicia, Bukovina, and Polonia, only in 19. Uh, 39 1940s at the same time as latvia lithuania and estonia were annexed by the soviet union they formed soviet europe or soviet west which remained longer outside the sphere of influence of socialist culture and um, and longer adapted it so uh, in 1949, 1939, 1941, first Sovietization and neo-folklorization of first in Ukraine. Uh, uh, until 1939, Western Ukraine had a different political and cultural history. These multicultural lands were historically and culturally associated with Soviet Ukraine or the ethnic Ukrainian part of the USSR. Both for political reasons were part of different states. For example, uh, in the Middle Ages and early modern period, the territories of Galician and Volinian principalities belonged first to the Ukrainian culture and political space centered in Kyiv, and then uh, became part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth or Moldavia Wallachia as Bukovina. After, uh, after uh, 1772, the newly formed Galicia and after 1774, uh, Bukovina were incorporated into the Austro Hungarian monarchy. Volinia voyageship of the Commonwealth became a part of the Russian Empire in uh, 1793. The collapse of the Gabsburg monarchy caused the emergency of the West Ukrainian People's Republic with its center in Lviv and Polish Ukrainian War of, uh, of 1918s. 1919s. Ukrainians sought to prove the Ukrainian ethnographic and cultural affiliation of these territories in the international arena, particularly in Riga, but failed. In 1923, the Council of Ambassadors recognized Poland's sovereignty over Eastern Galicia. Volinia also left for Poland. However, for Ukrainians, this territory remained Western Ukraine, separated from Central and Eastern Ukraine by a border on the Zbruch River. Uh, after that, um, at the beginning of the Second World War, despite industrialization, the relics of traditional agrarian society were preserved here as well traditional rural and urban folklore functioned, which was studied by the methods of European folklore and ethnography of the 19th, early 20th century. In 1939-1914, the Western Ukrainian lands faced the culture and reality of Soviet Ukraine, which had a different historical experience. Uh, the social revolution in uh, Ukrainian SSR here from some times did not destroy traditional folklore and stimulated modern methods of its study. However, the traditional folklore environment was soon destroyed and its researchers were repressed by the Soviet authorities. The new social folklore, Dume, epic poems about Lenin and Stalin, Chostushki about collective farm life, gradually began to displace uh, traditional genres and socialist folkloristics, the academic counterpart. The symbols of the change were the words of one of the heroes of the classical film directed, directed by Alexander Dovzhenko, Ears, Zemlya, a peasant who asked to bury his son, killed by kulaks, enemies of the people, according to the Soviet right. In 1939, uh, as a result of secret protocol to the non-aggression pact, between the USSR and Germany, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, Galicia and Volinia were annexed to the USSR. 
and in 1940s uh, 14 on other grounds Bukovina was incorporated to Soviet Ukraine. Convent in Lviv in 1939, the National Assembly legitimized this, uh, this annexion or accession. Thus, the image of liberation of ethnic Ukrainian lands and their unification in one state, as, as well as myth of Golden September in 1939 uh, began to create the changes the local oral tradition and material culture. In 1940s, uh, Alexander Dovzhenko made the film Liberation, in which he contrasted the backward culture of Western Ukraine as a colony of Polish imperialism with a progressive society of Soviet Ukraine. This also influenced the development of Western Ukrainian folkloristics and ethnography. Following the Soviet model, the new branch of the Institute of Folklore and of the Academy of Sciences of Ukrainian SSR, the branch of the Institute of History of Ukraine of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian SSR, and the branches of the Taras Shevchenko Institute of Ukrainian Literature and the Institute of Linguistics of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian SSR were founded. It was presented as a restoration and flourishing uh, of uh, regional ethnography and floristics. Galician ethnographers, dialectologists, and folklorists, uh, for example, Filaret Kolesa, Josef Ruzdolski, Stanislav Rutkevich, at that time sought to continue in the line of pre war research, historical history of folkloristics, traveling stories in the folklore of the Carpathians, diachrony of the Ukrainian epic. It was presented in the context of the Soviet ideology of reunification, which was in tune with the pre-Soviet idea of unity, the unification of Ukrainian ethnic territories in one state. It fit into the paradigm of Ukrainization of Polonized Galicia and Romanized Bukovina. But local folkloristics understood that uh, this Ukrainization meant the Sovietization of folklore and the science of folklore. Traditional scientific problems had to be inscribed in the system of Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist concepts, collectivism and common property in the life and oral tradition of the inhabitants of the Carpathians or the study of the so-called Oprishkis folklore, attackers on the richest inhabitants of the mountains as a manifestation of social protest social revolutionary foundation of the Western Ukrainian folklore, modernization, and in fact, the construction of Soviet folklore of the Western regions of Ukraine from the pre-war folklore of the re Western regions became strategic for the Soviet authorities. In 1940s, 1941, uh, scholars reported that they had recorded song in various localities with new relevant plots. Thus, in the struggle for Soviet power, uh, the triumph of Soviet arms forces, establishment of a new social order, memory of communist episodes in the history of the region. For example, a song about the Husserl uprising of 1920s. Sovietized lyrical songs, uh, also along with the text of traditional Western Ukrainian folklore, for example, Kolomaker songs about cuckoos, description of melodies, dances in the medicine, folk art, began to publish texts uh, where directly or metaphorically uh, glorified the new Soviet government. An important element of such folklore was the motif of brotherhood, kindship with the representative of the Red Army, songs of the communist underground of uh, Western Ukraine, for example, also appear. Many of these lyrics were superficially transformed to or parodied uh, songs, which in the original sometimes completely contradicted Soviet ideology and anti religious propaganda. For example, Koleda is a re re religious song for Christmas. Characteristically, songs about the victories of the Red Army over the Polish gentlemen in Warsaw were played nearby. The theme of Polish gentlemen enemies in this new song, when the gentlemen came here, for example, corresponded to the Soviet Red Army folklore from the Western Front and ideologies the myth of lordly gentlemen's 
Poland, the mobilizing of the figure of Semyon Budyonny or Klim Volroshilov of the Soviet Polish War of 20 of 1920s, during which the temporary Galician Social Soviet Republic emerged. It was this notion that were reactualized in the new folklore or folklore of Western Ukraine in 1939. The songs also relays thesis from the report of party figures who express the official position of the Soviet authorities on the events uh, of 1939-1940s. Uh, in general, during the 1949-1941, uh, Galicia remained divided in Soviet and German parts. On the first of them, Soviet folklore was created on the second non-Soviet and so anti-Soviet. In 1941, with the beginning of the German-Soviet war and until the end of the Nazi occupation of the region in 1944, the Sovietization of folklore and science was stopped. On the contrary, uh, the, the Sovietization and the modernization of Soviet culture began. After that uh, began the next uh, stage, 1944, 19, uh, 1991, from the triumph of socialism to the decline of social folklore. With the return of Soviet power in 1944 and the gradual destruction of the anti-communist underground, stencils of social culture became to norm. At this time, another region was annexed to the USSR, Transcarpathia, which had its own history. It, all, it also began to be uh, rapidly Sovietized. Now, the creation of the social folklore and socialist folkloristic has become a system, one of the forms of political influence of the government on society, which changes with the changes of region. As in the Baltic states, local writers and folklorists were involved in the creation of the distribution of the text of the new folklore, and they had to record and publish this text. Thus appeared the Soviet Kolomeki, literary songs from Kolomei as a city on the Prut River in the Carpathians, which have since been classified according to the themes and chronology that correspond to Soviet historiography, ideologies, and rituals. They were also, uh, also group uh, such Soviet Kolomeikis on an ideological basis. The first group showed the hard life of the working people in the period of imperialist Austro-Hungary, bourgeois, lordly Poland, crimes provoked by pity owner instinct in the interwar Czechoslovakia and Romania. They were oppo opposed by the revolutionary demonstrations of workers and peasants of the 19th and early 20th centuries. The second group developed the theme uh, reunification of all Ukrainian territories in Soviet Ukraine formed the image of World War, uh, Second World War as a German-Soviet Great Patriotic War, the heroic struggle of the Red Army and Soviet Sidor Kupak Semyon Rudnev with the Nazi German fascist inv invaders in the Carpathian, the resistance, resistance of Ukrainian workers to the regimes of Joe uh, Antonescu in Bukovna and Khorti in Transcarpathia. The time after uh, 1945 was depicted in two perspectives in the new Soviet folklore. The first, the pessimistic, pessimistic paradigm uh, was represented by bloody crimes of the anti-Soviet underground, representative of the anti-Soviet resistance in the new folklore were called servants of the Nazi German fascist invaders, Banderivci, who killed peaceful workers in the local civil conflict, teachers, Komsomol and party activities, uh, collective farmers. Another optimistic paradigm was formed by Chance Spivanke that showed the peaceful life of workers, the final establishment of the collective farm system, the triumph, triumph of Lenin's truth, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Separately, Soviet folkloristic singled out carols of 1940s, 1960s, 60s, 60s, which glorified the new life without religion. They were formed by replacing the star of Bethlehem with the red Soviet pentagonal star and inserting references to the Great October Revolution of 1970s instead of Christmas and pointing to the person of Lenin instead of Christ. 
such a transformation was specific. For example, the Carol said holy event has come, which in uh, Soviet publication was attributed to the time of the German occupation, was in fact a reworking of the Carol about communist repression in Western Ukraine. In general, the use of literary and ideological stamps of the socialist realist canon in the new fol folklore became noticeable. In other cases, the Soviet authorities tried to form new texts and scripts for new holidays. Some of them were to be a celebration of signif significant uh, events for the Soviet state national holidays, from the ideological Feast of the Great October, the Feast of the Soviet Army, Victory Day, International Women's Day on March the, uh, 8th, May Day, to a relativity and natural New Year. You can see on this picture the Monument of Glory in Lviv, uh, which was built uh, in the 1970s, uh, and uh, it is the opening ceremony of this monument. So, and the last one uh, passage is about between politics and positivism, Western Ukrainian folkloristics and ethnography after the Second World War. Um, very briefly. In Lviv, folkloristics and ethnology have long been concentrated around Lviv University and the Ukrainian State Museum of Ethnography and Art Crafts of the Academy of Sciences of Ukrainian uh, SSR since 1951. Later, Lviv branch of the Maxim Rilsky Institute of Art Studies, Folklore and Ethnography of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian SSR since uh, 1982. Instead, the electology was associated with the then Institute of Social Sciences of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian SSSR. Uh, the scientific status and careers of folklorists and ethnographers in Soviet Western Ukraine were different. Some scholars, such as, uh, such as Pavlo Zultovsky, a researcher of folk art, continued research in Galicia, which had begun in Soviet Ukraine in 1920s, 1930s. Another larger part of local researchers, such as Roman Kirchev or Ivan Denisuk, represented the Galician and Volinian schools of folkloristics of the post war years which was a symbolism of the pre-Soviet and Soviet ethnology. After all, some ethnologists and folklorists represented the official government, while others represented a dissident or semi-dissident discourse. discourse. So, and some conclusion. Uh, the conclusions, despite the ideology of Western Ukrainian folkloristics, as well as ethnography, played the same role as in the Western Republic of the USSR, in particular in Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, accumulated folklore texts and preserved the pre Soviet tradition of their analysis, modifying them, modernizing them, and thus strengthened uh, strengthen uh, local and national identity. So, to some extent, the pre Soviet European tradition preserved here from 1920s, 1930s was hiding in the form of the Soviet one and was thus institutionalized. The more difficult case was with socialist war folklore. The folklore that glorified Soviet ideologies uh, and ideologies, the cult of Lenin, Stalin, the glorification of Soviet power and the collective farm system, and branded bourgeois nationalists was a purely literary and virtual socialist realist construct that existed only in scientific practice, not in real practice. To a lesser extent, this applied to socialist rights, which with resistance tried to introduce into everyday life, also they were perceived as artificial. Such texts as corresponding rituals uh, in the USSR were perceived as socialist in content national in form. Therefore, they have completely disappeared from the collective and cultural memory. The transformed Ukrainian traditional folklore as well as fake lore songs of literary origin, which were also promoted as folk, performed by amateurs ensembles of folk arts uh, in such system because rather socialist in form national in content. They were Ukrainian through Soviet. This was in line with the policy of culture and memory in the Ukrainian uh, SSR, which even in Stalin's time balanced be between international and national Ukrainization and Russification or bilingualism and big culturalism. 
At the same time, in the 1960s, 1980s, a new partially occidentalized or westernized Ukrainian and generally Soviet mass culture uh, gradually began to form, which changed or even supplanted uh, the older oral tradition. During the post-war period, it was modernized by also Sovietis, Sovietized, and only after 1991, its gradual Sovietization began to take place. So thank you for your attention.